All right, folks, happy Friday. Right before spring break, we made it. We never thought we would, but here we are. But I wanted to give out this message of how to make the most out of your spring break, right? A lot of us, whenever we get a large bit of time off, our first inclination is to, you know, just watch as much TV as possible or sleep in and stay up late and do all this stuff. And that stuff is very fun and all that's good. But I just wanted to think about together what it means to really take a break from something, take a break from school. And so during the spring break, I want you to think about maintaining, resting, and refilling. So what do I mean by that? Maintaining, uh, in this sense, means do things that you've needed to do. This includes all the stuff that you don't really have time for when you're going to school, doing extracurriculars, trying to work at the same time possibly, and dealing with things at home. Now that you have some time off, you can do things like clean up your area or do the chores that you've needed to do or that you're being asked to do that you haven't had time to do before. Organize your spaces. Maybe your backpack is a mess. I know my car is a disaster area right now, and I've got to clean it up, and I'll finally have time to do that. This is a big one. Run errands that can only happen during school hours, like a haircut or going to the dentist. Go to the DMV. Anything that can only happen during school hours that you don't have time to do regularly. And then this may be applicable to a lot of you. Take this time to apply for summer jobs or internships, all right? No other teenager in the world who wants a good summer job or internship is thinking about that right now. They're thinking about spring break. They're just like, woo, spring break, let's go. I just want to party, nothing else matters. You, however, are smart. And so you are going to use this time to apply early to some of those internships or jobs. And by the time everybody else gets around to finding all the jobs, all the good ones with the highest pay will be taken by you. But of course, we also need to rest to engage in low energy, relaxing activities that yes, includes Reading, if you're into that sort of thing, you should be. It makes you smarter. Catching up on shows, playing video games, all those fun things, low energy things that I know I'm going to enjoy. Sometimes we just need to turn on a screen and turn off our brains, and that's totally okay. But after you get sick of that, go outside, okay? Texas only has a few precious days out of the year that the weather is actually nice and bearable to be outside in. So take a walk, go outside, get out of the house, and enjoy the spring weather. That's what it's here for. And then the last thing, of course, is to sleep, all right? And I put in parentheses to maintain your schedule because I know that it's going to be very easy to stay up way late, doing all those things, playing video games and catching up on shows and talking to friends and partying or doing whatever. But if you spend the nine days of break getting into the habit of staying up till 3 a.m. and sleeping in till 1 p.m., then there's going to be quite a rude awakening for you on the Monday that we come back. So just make sure you're paying attention to your sleep and that you're getting plenty of it. And in fact, you know how sleep is important to me and I want it to be important to you. So I am going to show you now a three minute clip from a video. You've seen this man before. He's like a sleep expert. And he's going to talk to you about how not getting enough sleep can actually affect your emotions. And so please enjoy that message now. So exactly how does a lack of sleep impact our emotional brain? Why does that lack of sleep make us so emotionally irrational and hyperreactive? Well, several years ago, we conducted a brain imaging study and we took a group of healthy adults and we either gave them a full night of sleep or we sleep deprived them. And then the next day, we placed them inside an MRI scanner. And we looked at how their emotional brain was reacting. And we focused on one structure in particular. It's called the amygdala. And the amygdala is one of the centerpiece regions for the generation of strong emotional reactions, including negative emotional reactions. Now, when we looked at those people who'd had a full night of sleep, what we saw was a nice, appropriate, moderate degree of reactivity from the amygdala. It wasn't as though there was no response at all, but it was an appropriate response. Yet in those people who were sleep deprived, that deep emotional brain center was in fact hyperactive. Indeed, the amygdala was almost 60% more responsive under conditions of a lack of sleep. But why was that the case? And what we went on to discover is that there's another brain region that's involved. 
This brain region is called the prefrontal cortex, and it sits directly above your eyes. And you can think of the prefrontal cortex almost like the CEO of your brain. It's very good at making high-level, executive, top-down control decisions and reactions. In fact, it's one of the most evolved regions of our brain. And one of the parts of the brain that it controls is this deep emotional center, the amygdala. Now, in those people who'd had a full night of sleep, there was a nice strong communication and connection between the prefrontal cortex, regulating that deep emotional brain center. But in those people who were sleep deprived, that communication, that connection between the prefrontal cortex and that deep amygdala emotional brain center had essentially been severed. And as a consequence, the amygdala was responding far more reactively due to a lack of sleep. It's almost as though without sleep, we become all emotional accelerator pedal and too little regulatory control break. And that seems to be the reason that we become so unbuckled in terms of our emotional integrity when we haven't been sleeping well. So that's the bad that can happen if I take sleep away from you. But it turns out that there's something good that happens when you get your sleep back. And sleep, particularly rapid eye movement sleep, actually offers a form of emotional first aid because it's during sleep at night that we take these difficult emotional experiences that we've been having during the day, and that sleep acts almost like a nocturnal soothing balm, taking the sharp edges off those difficult experiences. And so perhaps it's not time that heals all wounds. It's time during sleep that provides that form of emotional convalescence, so that when we come back the next day, we're able to cope with those emotional memories. All right, so sleep definitely ties into your emotional health and your emotional life, so keep that in mind as you're enjoying your time off. And the last of the three things that you should do over the spring break is to refill, and this is what that means, the fun activities that make up the meaning of life. It's not that those restful activities that we just got done talking about aren't also in some ways refilling. But these are some of the ideas whenever I think of refilling my energy. Hanging out with friends that I haven't been able to hang out with for a while, or at least not outside of school. Reconnecting with family members, if that's something that you need to do, or that everyone's been busy and maybe you haven't had time to sit down and be a family. Travel, if it's possible, even a short distance, all right? You don't have to have a ton of money or uh, a car even to travel. That You can just get out of the house, all right? My favorite short distance travel is to go to a lake out in Rowlett, which is like 30 minutes away, and go fishing. Anything that gets you out of your routine or out of your house, something new, something adventurous, that can be very fulfilling. With all this time, you can start trying a new hobby or lean into the hobbies that you already have. Overall, try to do your best to make memories with the people that you love, with the people that are around you, with the people that you're going to be hanging out with, whatever the situation might be, Trying to do these things can make sure that you are refreshed and refilled and ready to go for our last quarter between the end of this next week and summer. No matter what you do this spring break, make sure that you are safe and smart, all right? If you are planning on traveling, please be safe. If you are planning on partying, make sure you make smart decisions. Make sure that you and the people around you are safe and we'll all come back refreshed and ready to tackle the last part of the year. You can enjoy the short discussion that I have on the next slide, and then you can enjoy your nine days away from school. I hope that your household is peaceful, and I hope that your time this week is both meaningful and restful. Be good to yourself and others, and we'll see you in a few days.